It's been an unusually mild winter in western New York, and as a result, Lake Erie is virtually ice-free. But the entire Great Lakes Basin is also close to historically low record ice levels. I'm showing you some stats in this week's Heather's WeatherWise. Here's a recent satellite image from a clear day showing Lake Erie. This is a really unusual sight this late in the year. There is no ice on our end. The very little that does exist is all the way in the western end. But check out this week's report of the ice cover on all five Great Lakes. Just 6.8% ice covered. Back in the winter of 2001 and 2002, the Great Lakes Basin set a record low season ice cover of 11.8%. We've already tied that mark so far this year as of January 21st, but over the past couple of weeks, that ice cover hasn't really grown. Here's the lowest ice coverage for the five lakes as of February 5th. This year ranks as the fifth lowest, and notice how recent many of these years are. Ice records go back to the early 1970s. With all of that open lake water, with just a little bit of cold air, you'd think it'd be bombs away for lake effect snow, right? It turns out a lot of locations that are downwind of their respective lakes are hurting for snowfall this season, as you can see by the percent of average to this point. The exceptions are Green Bay and Marquette. It's typically 10 to 15 degrees colder that far north, so even unusually warm winters like this one can still be snowy. It's all relative. That brings me to one more interesting set of data compiled by fellow meteorologist and climate scientist Brian Brett Schneider. He tweeted this map a couple of months ago. It shows the percentage of snowfall that falls on a day where the temperature is below average. About three quarters of buffalo snow comes on those colder than normal days. For the upper Midwest, it's about half and half. This is just one way of showing how fine a line we walk when it comes to lake effect snow. Milder winters can up our snowfall potential, but if it's too warm, it just won't snow, period. We're also now technically past our coldest days of the winter. Average high temperatures started increasing this week, but as we know, an average doesn't necessarily tell you much of what's to come around here. That's it for this week's Heather's WeatherWise. I'll see you next week with a new topic, but until then, remember it's good to be a geek.